Okay, so right now I want to talk about the toolbar. So it's this panel right up here. And um, it has some useful features and some that I find aren't too useful. But I'm just going to go over all of these. So uh, if we look up here, the first one's Translate. And the first title is actually Transform. And it's this section right here. So it has Translate, Rotate, and Scale. So translate is kind of just a fancy way of saying grab or move. So if you were to click translate, it would kind of be just the same thing as pressing G on the keyboard. So um, same as pressing G pretty much. And that goes for all of these. So translate would be G for the hotkey and rotate is R and S is scale. So you can do the same thing with the hotkeys as well. Uh, but they're right up there if you need them. And origin now is a little bit of a weird one. Origin, uh, the origin point is basically this little dot right here. So the little orange point right here. And what this is is the center of your object. So what the origin, if you, this option origin does, is it kind of moves this around and um, does some kind of neat stuff. So if you select origin, there's a set origin to geometry to origin, origin to geometry, and origin to 3D cursor. And the hotkeys are right beside this as well. So geometry to origin would be, of course, the um, the cube, or whatever uh, object you're actually selected at that time. So the geometry would um, go, or the yeah, the geometry would go to the origin point. So right now would just stay in the same place, but if we were to move the origin point and uh, do that, it would uh, go right back to the geometry. So ge uh, origin to geometry would be the origin point to the geometry. Uh, so it's kind of just the opposite. And then we have origin to 3D cursor. Now I'll just demonstrate this one. So say... Um, we were to place our 3D cursor, and now you can place your 3D cursor by left-clicking uh, anywhere in the 3D view. So, say we put it there, and we go to Origin, and set Origin to 3D cursor. So we click that, or shift Control alt c which is pretty long. It has now put our origin point right where the 3D cursor is. And if we were to rotate, or scale, or anything, it would actually do it around that. And I think I have a duplicate here. But yeah, you get the idea. So um, anyways, the origin point's placed straight over there. Now if we want to get the cube back or the origin point back, we could just go to origin and then origin to geometry. And it would place it right back in the center of the cube. So that's kind of uh, what origin point is all about or origin the option on the toolbar and um, you might find a use for that sometime uh, but the next one's object now this one's the really useful stuff so uh, this is the duplicate delete and join options now there's of course hotkeys for these as well but it's uh, kinda nice to have them on the toolbar right over here uh, now duplicate would be just duplicating your object or shift D for the hotkey so if you want to duplicate this cube right here you could just press duplicate and it would then give you another duplicate um, and delete would ask you to d if you want to delete the actual object um, and then you'd click delete or X in the 3d view for the hotkey so if you want to duplicate, delete, or join your object, they're all right here. And um, join, uh, let's just see this. So say we duplicate this with Shift-D, or actually let's use this right here. So duplicate, bring it over. So I just pressed uh, Y to lock it along the Y axis. And now that we have these placed, we can select this one, then Shift-select this one. And we can then join these by the hotkey or um, this option right here. So join or control J for the hotkey. And now these objects are joined. So, yeah. 
um, shading. So shading would be kind of how it looks in the 3D view, and when it's rendered, actually. So it's kind of the appearance of the faces and the transition, if they're smooth or if it's a harsh transition, if it's kind of just flat shaded or smooth shaded. So that's what, I, what it is, basically. And I won't be able to demonstrate this on a cube too well, because the cube doesn't have very many faces and not much geometry. So it's uh, not going to look too well. I, I can do it just to show, but it's... Um, I know it looks a little bit smoother, but just a little bit weird, actually. So, uh, I'm going to add a different object, just to demonstrate this better. So, I'm going to click to left-click to center my cursor wherever I want, and then Shift-A to add an object. And I'll add a UV sphere. And that should be good, actually. And if we select Smooth now, it will be a nice smooth transition. So you can really tell the difference between flat and smooth here. So it's right there. You can also get it from the specials menu, but um, this is actually a lot quicker right here. Okay, so back to these other things. Now, keyframes I'm not going to go into too much, but uh, just know that you can insert them and remove them right from the toolbar right here. So, uh, just going into it a little bit, this would be your timeline down here, and you can drag this by left-clicking and dragging the little kind of cursor or line or whatever it is. And um, you can actually insert, so say you drag it up to like the 20 for the 20th frame, and um, you want to insert a keyframe there uh, with the cube. So you go to insert, and then it shows you all the different kind of keyframes you can insert. So location, rotation, scale, uh, location, rotation, all of that. So say we just want a location one. So we click location. And now if you move this away, you can see that it's uh, kind of a yellow line, which indicates that it has a keyframe on, on that frame. It's it's locked to that frame. So uh, it's kind of the basics of animation right there. And you can also remove them too. Delete keyframe. So that's all in the toolbar. Now the repeat option right here is kind of interesting and kind of useful actually. So say you duplicate your cube. So you go up to duplicate right here. And you move it in a weird position like right there. If you actually go to repeat last, if you click repeat repeat last, it will actually do the exact same action uh, that you just did before that. So if you're doing something over and over again, like some repetitive task, you'll find that using the repeat last is actually pretty useful. So you can just keep clicking that and adding more objects. Or whatever you did, uh, whatever you last did. And um, the history option, I'll just go back. The uh, history option right here just allows you to go through your history. I um, guess we don't have any history really. But uh, say we do a couple actions and go to history, we can then see what we actually did last. So all we, I did is just duplicate the cube. So it's just going to show that. But say we do some more things, so we size it down we grab it over, we, uh, we duplicate this one, and rotate it a little bit. Uh, if we go to history, then we've done a whole bunch of different things. So we've rotated, duplicated, translated, resized, all that stuff. And um, we can choose any one of these to do again. So say we want to resize it again, it's been resized. So history is kind of like an advanced version of the repeat last. You can just repeat any of your last over a period of, I don't know how far it goes back, but at least like 10 back. Okay, so that's for the repeating. Now another one is the grease pencil. I'm not going to go into this either yet in this tutorial, but um, what this allows you to do is just basically draw in 3D space. So you click the draw key, or the draw button right there, and it gives you a little paintbrush tool, and you can then draw around in your 3D space. Um, so it kind of looks like that. 
and you can also erase to and uh, if you click the line tool right here it just allows you to draw a straight line so you just click and dry, drag that okay so one more thing I actually want to talk about is the operating panel so it's this kind of little panel right here underneath this other stuff and what this does is it allows you to edit your action that you've just done so say we duplicate this so shift D to duplicate and we move it over a little bit now it'll give us all these options that we can actually edit about that action that we've just done so we can make it a linked duplicate uh, we can change the location of it so the translation uh, we can actually lock it along a certain axis and its orientation all of that it's all here and note that once you do another action this uh, these options actually go away and it's the new action so say we just size this down by pressing S it's now all about resizing that so it's all about the action that you've just done and um, it's it's kind of neat actually so say we add a new object because this is kind of really where it comes into play so shift A to add a new object and let's add a UV sphere so we've just added a sphere right up there and we have the add UV sphere options that right here so this is the kind of cool part we can actually change the segments rings and size of the object before it's officially added so we wanna if we wanna change the segments down a little bit we could do it all right here and we can actually see in real time the segments going down or up so it's nice to see and um, same with the size too so say that you added the object and it was kinda too big for what you wanted you could size it down without even having to press S to size it down um, and same with the rings and the location actually where you add it, rotation and you can align it to view so that's all the options for adding a UV sphere and I think that's pretty much good for the operator and the toolbar so some some nice features there and um, hope we can get to use some sometime <laughs> Thank you.